The newest data for mortgage delinquency rates is out and it's bad news. Hey everybody, it's another Friday. My name's Matthew Pfeiffer. I'm a real estate agent, Regina, Saskatchewan. That's my trusted assistant, Matilda. This is the weekly news recap here on Ball Prairie Real Estate. We'll be talking later on about what's going on with delinquency rates in Canada, but let's start off with another terrible bad dad joke. This one comes from a past client of mine. What do you need to be a great land salesman? Lots. If you have a terrible joke that I can use in a future episode, put it in the comments below. Let's get into this week's news. Second piece of news I have here is actually a really good news story. I talked about this last week that I was really frustrated because I had someone who had moved from the Ukraine, they had fled the war, and they wanted to establish a new life here in Canada. And because of the home buyer ban, they were banned from buying a property in Canada. Now, it's taken nearly a month of trying to get a hold of somebody in the government who could give me a proper answer, but I finally got one that is yes they are exempt from the foreign buyer ban. They can buy a property in Canada. It's really frustrating that it took this long, nearly a month to get an answer, a straight answer from somebody. When I talked to CMHC about this, I was told to consult a lawyer. I thought that was very frustrating. CMHC, you're only supposed to have the answers for this, but they just said, go talk to a lawyer instead. But I'm really excited because now I know that this person is eligible to buy a property in Canada. They can establish this new life and I'm happy to help them do so. Now, I should have been talking about inflation in last week's news recap, but actually I had it in the script and then completely forgot to record that part. But we saw the newest inflation data out from Stats Canada for December. It decreased, it was 6.8% in November, decreased to 6.3%. Now, inflation is measured in a year over year metric. And when they say inflation decreased, that doesn't mean something got cheaper. It just means it didn't get ex as expensive as quickly. So when you look at, for example, the metric that they like to call core inflation, that's when they strip out the volatile things like fuel, so energy prices and food prices. Well, you can see that that has been basically flat now for a number of months in a row, month to month. Why that's important is because as the year progresses and we look back on year over year data, you're gonna to continue to see inflation come down if that trend holds true. And that is important because that is what the Bank of Canada is basing interest rates on, or that's what they're using as a major decision point to base interest rates. So yes, inflation is declining. No, things are not getting cheaper. They're just getting expensive a little bit slower. And speaking of the Bank of Canada and interest rates, once again, for the eighth consecutive time, the Bank of Canada raised interest rates again, this time by 0.25%. That was kind of what the betting money was on. So now the overnight rate is at 4.5%. They did say though, they're going to be hitting a pause on interest rate increases. And that is of course predicated on relatively stable economic data, meaning that inflation continues to decline and overall the economy continues to remain relatively stable. We don't see spikes one way or another. Now again, the Bank of Canada has said things like they have in the past, hey, interest rates will remain low for a very long time. And then a year and a half later, start raising interest rates like crazy going up a consecutive time. So they can and they will change their tone based on a situation changing. Of course, interest rates have a major impact on the Canadian real estate market. We have saw as interest rates increased, home prices in Canada decreased. We've also been seeing that it appears that buyers are starting to get used to just accepting five and six percent interest rates are here to stay. And we appear to be near the top of interest rate increases because as the Bank of Canada has slowed down rate increases, we've also seen the pace of price declines in the Canadian housing market decline as well. Of course, the spring market is upon us. That is going to be a really telltale sign. Have buyers truly accepted that five and six percent interest rates are here to stay and that is the new environment we're in? Well, we'll have to wait and see what happens for the sales this spring. Now, I'm sure this is a fun topic that will cause absolutely no controversy in the comments section. That is Ontario's hottest real estate markets. I can see people already typing madly saying, no, there are no hot markets in Ontario. Hold on. This is an article from Zucasa and what they're using for determining what is a hot market is fewest days on market. That is how long it takes a property to sell. Of course, longer days on market, that is indicative of a slower market. In Toronto, for example, averages on market is about 40 days. Now let's look at the hottest markets, according to this. In third place here, little drum roll, London, Ontario, 28 days. Aurora, 26 days. And number one, the hottest market, according to this article, Waterloo with days on market at 25. On the flip side of the coin, the slowest markets for days on market, it's a tie between Caledon and Orangeville at 60 days. Now let's talk about mortgage foreclosures, delinquency rate, mortgage arrears. 
Well, if you were someone that was banking on seeing a surge of foreclosures in Canada, I've got some bad news for you right now because the delinquency rate, that is people that are 90 days or more behind on mortgage payments, that of course is the leading indicator for people that can end up in foreclosure. And remember that only about 50% of people that are delinquent on the mortgage actually end up in foreclosure historically. Now this data, I get it, it's older, but it's the newest data we have. Well, in the end of September, that number was 0.14% or about 7,300 mortgages of the 5 million in Canada. At the end of October, that increased to 0.15% or about 7,400 mortgages. So it increased by about 100. Of course, the headlines are gonna be saying how mortgage arrears are on the rise. Well, they are, but again, let's put this in some context. From 2000 to 2020, the average in Canada was 0.3%, and that was considered historically low and very low compared to the rest of the world. So we have to do double where we are today just to get back to the historically low levels of mortgage arrears. So if you are banking on seeing this huge surge of foreclosures and desperate sellers because they can't make their payments, well, right now the data is just not showing that. Of course, I do expect mortgage arrears to increase throughout the remainder of the year as people struggle with higher interest rates and of course, higher costs of living with how much inflation has increased. But we have a long ways to go just to get back to those historically low levels. If you got this far, you obviously love learning about Canadian real estate. So how about you give me a like on this video, subscribe to Valparaiso Real Estate if you haven't already, leave a comment below, I'd love chatting with you guys in the comment section. And right here is what the YouTube algorithm says you need to watch next here on Valparaiso Real Estate. As always guys, thanks very much for watching.